we're going to talk a little bit about disc materials and what your options are on the market. It's something that a lot of people have a lot of questions about and don't really understand what's available. And the thing I want to make clear up front is the people who manufacture different friction materials are going to have different mixtures and different compounds and different ingredients recipes, so to speak, that allow us to get in a lot of different places. But as a broad stroke, we're going to touch on the main types. Uh, the main type, of course, that everybody's familiar with in stock stuff, which I'm not going to really spend a lot of time beating on, is an organic style material. An organic style material is basically, uh, simply put, it's organic material blended into a, uh, a metal fibrous weave. So it's, it's something that's made to handle for a lot, a lot of use. It's smooth engagement. It's available in most every OEM street car that you're going to buy. That's very common. The next thing that you're going to look at, of course, is something along the lines of Kevlar. Um, Kevlar and carbon slash ceramic, or sorry, ceramic should be kind of maybe spoken about in the same thing. It's a very, they're, they're all very aggressive. They're, they're really good for mostly like a road race application or some, they're really good with a lot of your uh, import applications that their horsepower is fairly high compared to their weight. So that helps a little bit more there. But they're not really overly great as far as longevity and they do not have a smooth engagement. That's, that's something that's a little bit trickier. Heat is something else that is a major factor to those. Um, and you'll have a lot of times there's not that there's a major issue there with break-in period versus say something like an organic. Um, what everybody's really wanting to know more about is really what I want to call the centered iron or the powdered metals is the better way of really covering the entire gambit. Powdered metals, if you were to go into a factory who makes a powdered metal style disc, it's the same thing as like a brake pad, for example. It's a mixture of different uh, powdered metals to go undergo heat and pressure treatments to be bonded to a specific carrier in order to have a certain friction coefficient that you want to achieve. The Where we should start off with is most of my drag racers out there have constantly asked me, and ask on the forums and social media, what about uh, the different compounds of centered iron? Centered iron is what everybody's used to seeing in a long style you know, clutch to a pro billet style clutch or anything like that. That's the most common thing you're gonna see. The three basic compounds are, the first one is 5135. 5135 is the most aggressive compound on the market. That is, or as, as I should say, is common. The 50-50 follows it up, which is 50-50 is the reason they use that terminology. Of course, is it's in the middle. The least friction, or the least friction coefficient, or least aggressive, is 5191. 5191 is what you would find in most top fuel, pro stock, pro mod style, multi disc, pro billet style clutches. 5135 once again is going to be found on most of the um, most of your truck pull, drag race, single disc things along those lines. That being said, 5050 is somewhat of just to be very honest about it is somewhat of a band aid material. However, it works okay in some of our truck tractor pull applications along those lines. In drag racing, it tends to be a little bit of, like say, of a band-aid, just simply because the mixture that it takes to get to that point is not as good for longevity. It works great as far as what it actually has as a friction coefficient and tuning. It just usually doesn't last quite as long. All of the different clutch manufacturers or clutch disc manufacturers, a lot of there's different metallurgy involved and different options. So you may find a company that will build something it's very similar to a 5191, but it's a little bit more aggressive. We use high speed, low speed friction dynos. Basically, there's different ways uh, in brake testing, uh, which when I say brake, it's basically like a, a dyno engine brake, um, that we can tell exactly how much friction coefficient per a, a determined amount, say a square inch. So the, it, we know from one application to the next, if we're changing, exactly what it's going to do. So that's why a lot of times our customers are always surprised by they go from one style application of a clutch that is a totally different diameter and a totally different material, and we switch some, to something totally different, a different, you know, they go from one disc to two discs or, or backwards, uh, whichever way, and they're surprised how we can be so close as far as the original tune-up out of the gate. 
the reason for that is if you understand the math and the friction coefficient and applied pressure correctly, we're able to get really close. Granted, each car is going to react to a change differently, um, and each one is their own, you know, their own hurdle. But that being said, it, we should be able to get pretty close just based on the math. Um, the friction materials, the things that really need to be explained on any clutch. And this really doesn't matter if this is a drag race application, a pro drag race application, or your everyday street car. Anytime you're replacing the discs, you really need to make sure everything is smooth, flat, and fresh. At least flat. Anytime that you put a warped surface onto a disc surface, you're always going to prematurely warp it and it's going to go back to where it was quicker than it ever did before. That is one of the most important things. To stay on the topic of the centered iron, you will a lot of times see that a lot of the pro stock teams or the top fuel teams, etc. Now, top fuel is a little, or funny car is a little bit different in the fact that you're going to find that they'll use a disc one run, maybe two. After two, at the most, it's in the trash can. Uh, of course, they're a lot harder on them. It's a little bit different ball game. But regardless, even in pro stock, the reason a lot of people ask, why do you guys cut the discs every round? Is it necessary? Granted, we do hot lap them, so to speak, once in a while when we're put into a really bad situation on time or there's a problem, and we're usually pretty close on our tune-up, but the reason we do it is because we're trying to keep everything as consistent and the same every time when we hit the starting line as, as, as humanly possible. So keeping all our materials fresh and exactly the same when we go up there is important. That way we know what adjustments accounted for what change in performance. The biggest thing to look at an explanation of that, of what we do when we diamond tip a disc, some people argue whether or not you should diamond tip a disc or you should use a grinding stone. Personally, in our world, we use a diamond tip, and the reason for it is a grinding stone tends to harden and or raise the rock well of the, uh, of the disc. So whenever you have that happen, that provides an extra level of inconsistency. When you diamond tip a disc, what you're doing is you're breaking off what I call the candy coating. If you ever run a centered iron clutch disc and you pull it out after some runs and you look at it, it's really shiny and you can tell it's a lot harder and it does not have that porous consistency that it did when you first got it. So when you go to cut a clutch disc with a diamond tip cutter, it's important to only take off the absolute minimum that you absolutely need to to completely remove the candy coating and have the disc completely flat from the inside diameter to the outside diameter. Otherwise, you're just wasting clutch material, and not to mention the thinner that the disc gets, the worse the heat dissipation is on the clutch, so that's why you know we cycle out discs, even in pro stock, and I should say any multi-disc type pro style unit, we'll cycle them out as they get, as they get low. So if it's a two disc unit, for example, and we get down and we see on a lot of our stuff, you know, under 290, we're starting to look at replacing them. So to explain that, 0.290, on those style discs are where we start looking at replacing them. A lot of times we'll take a disc out, put a new one in. Rather than two, we put one in, we, we cycle it in, we then put in the second one so that we don't throw any possible inconsistency out the window. A lot of you have probably heard a lot of these big professional teams buy big batches of discs uh, simply just because that way they know what they get. They know that when it was made, because the things that affect powdered metal, centered iron, that type of industry, that type of process, is that what time of year they're made, the, the environment in which they're made in, can all affect, I mean, just the mixture can make a difference. You know, if you put an extra cup of one ingredient in versus another, it can change how it works. So if you get something made in when it's really humid out versus you get something made when it's really dry out or the temperature's different, the barometric's different, that makes a big difference as far as how it's probably going to react. Now, that being said, most applications of single disc clutches, non-pro style stuff, really does not see that, um, that transition or show itself in your tune-ups as much as it would say something a little bit more finicky or a little bit more you know, dicey as far as the exact perfect amount. So what we try to do is we try to keep that consistency the best we can from batch to batch. However, that's why we use certain manufacturers to make our parts and not just anybody. There, there's, a, there's a high standard of quality that goes into effect there. The other thing to look at is on discs. Now this doesn't matter if it's a centered iron material, if it's an organic material or whatever it is. You need to be very careful in looking at the carrier. The carrier is the part of the disc that the material is bonded to. 
the part that the hub is riveted to. That part can be thinner, thicker, and have different materials. If the material, if the, the carrier is too thin, of course, it's going to flex, move, and you're going to have problems with it doing that at high RPM. And as well as it's going to have problem with heat dissipation and possible breakdown. So a lot of times guys will throw out pictures that they've had problems with as clutches where they've ripped the hub out or they've ripped basically a paddle off of a, uh, a diaphragm style, uh, well, I should say organic or something, a clutch disc that's not a centered iron. And the reason that they usually have that problem is basically because something started to give away and it kind of locked up. Something basically could not turn, something got in the way and it bonded to itself. Heat cycles are really bad on applications like that. So if you're putting a car away and the thing's been really, really hot, it's starting to get really, really thin, the disc material's getting close to being worn out, and you go out and you have, you know, you put the car away from a night of bracket racing and it was really warm, um, and you put it away and you trailer it home and you go out and you run it again, and all of a sudden you drop it on the starting line, the clutch is still cold. That's what a lot of times when you'll see a failure, same thing on the street can happen as well. Uh, just simply because it's it's broken it's broken down and it's not good over time. Centered iron discs. I do want to take the second to explain that we do a lot of different thicknesses and we have different manufacturers that make the products for us. And we a lot of times will specify exactly what we want. Well, that's why we offer different mixes, different compounds, so that we can tailor our customers' needs exactly where we want them. And we hold them to you know a fairly high standard of production so that we know exactly what you're getting. And we can design them that way based off of what we know we can accomplish with the applied pressure of the clutch that you're getting. That being said, there's different carrier thicknesses once again and different disc thicknesses. Of course, if you have a height problem in your bell housing, it's very important to be able to get that height right so you can get the proper engagement of your clutch, so you can get the right uh, free play, which is the bearing to the, to the, to the levers or the per bearing to the diaphragm. Because uh, you do not, of course, want your bearing touching the clutch at all times going down the track. So you got to have enough you know, room to stick your head in there and wiggle your ears around, so to speak. And it's important, basically, so that we can set everything up where it needs to. So sometimes we might do, um, the thinnest disc that we, we use is .330 or a 330 disc. That's about as thin as we ever really care to go. The, we can do anything from approximately, we can do about .40, most are 385. But 330 to 385 is a very common thickness on um, centered iron materials. You want to make sure that that thickness, is, that there's a plenty of material on each side at any given time. Uh, but basically, that being said, as long as you have everything flat and everything's wearing properly, you're usually okay. But a thin disc can get you in trouble quicker than almost anything else. So I will take this moment to say, a lot of my racers have asked me in our classes who are wanting to learn how to go quicker. Um, they say, how many runs should I get out of a you know, long style clutch? Of course, how much horsepower you have, weight, how you run it, gear ratio, splits. Basically, the demand on the clutch makes a difference. But most of our, say, long style single disc units should see, let's say, somewhere between 75 to maybe 100, 110 runs before they should be pulled out. Um, some people say, I get 200 runs out of it. And the answer, or my reply to that is, there's more to be had in your performance that way. Uh, if it's that tight, it means you're really not slipping it. Um, there needs to be more done. Now, you may be happy with that application because the car may be deadly consistent. And if you know less work and less maintenance, it is great for everybody. Um, but if you're looking for maximum performance, that's really something to look for. So getting in there and keeping everything flat is a major uh, importance. So... I always, you know, an old saying that uh, John Cozzi taught me when I was a kid is, is, do you have more time or do you have more money? So, some of you may have the more money, but if you'll work that way with everything and you, you basically double check everything, the more you check your clutch, the more you pull it out and just clean everything up, scuff it, make sure everything's flat and wearing right, the longer it's going to last for you. We try to engineer everything that we can. Uh, basically with that in mind, it's part of why we do our segmented heat shields. It's part of why we do all the tapering of different uh, you know, parts to try to keep things cool. It's why we use aluminum as often as we can to dissipate as much heat as possible. Those things are all important for the longevity, but longevity comes directly with consistency. So when people pull out you know, one of our clutches, that's why they're always amazed that they're wearing all the way across the entire surface over the entire course of that disc's life. And the reason for that, of course, is how we design it. But it's very important so that not only does it cost you less when you're going to do a refresh, because we can surface that thing a few times instead of having to replace that heat shield every single time. So 
basically disc materials to understand them. A 50 50 is a way to go whenever you're going from a, you know, if you are 51 91, you feel like you need a little more. You're a 51 35 and you feel like, you know, you need a little less. There are other options on top of those three major, major ones, but it really you need to look at your applied pressure and what your other options are. That's why a lot of times we like to visit with our customers and have a phone, range of phone call and email, whatever we can, so we can go over the entire, uh, basically set up of the car because a lot of times there's another way that we can basically fix that without having to put you into something that's not exactly normal for everybody to use. We want to give you the best consistency that we can overall in a long period of time. So if you guys got any questions, don't hesitate. Make sure you email us, let us know, um, and we'd be happy to touch base on any other products or parts in, in terms of that that you'd like us to.